Okay, Miss Valerie Lin, first of all, I want to thank you very much for taking the time off your busy schedule to be with us today. Mm -hmm. um, I understand you're a corporate trainer with Knowledge Point. Can you tell us a little bit about your background? My background is uh, I'm American. I grew up in New Jersey and lived and worked in New York. Mm -hmm. And there I worked for a Japanese finance firm. And in Japanese firm, you wear many hats. And one of them was um, doing training, orientation for staff whether it was coming over from Japan or uh, people who worked there on um, orient introduction to the company and procedures, policies, mm -hmm. as well as some computer training. I was the person who would be sent for computer classes and then train people. Then I went over to J uh, Japan teaching English and I was teaching English on a corp in a corporate atmosphere. And with that, I was also doing some um, training with uh, how to um, understand the American business culture mm -hmm. as well as negotiating and so uh, then I did that for four and a half years after two years I had my own company and ventured into media and, mm -hmm. and, and other forms of, of training and teaching. Okay. And right now you're doing um, training on customer service, communication over the phone. You're the yes. expert in, in you know providing quality service. Mm -hmm. From your personal experience, what is the best service you've ever had over the phone as a customer? The best experience I've had has been with Citibank, mm -hmm. for sure. I've been a, a customer of theirs for many, many years, for about 10 years or more, mm -hmm. and their training is impeccable with their, their staff, how they handle customer service. They get a lot of training, and it's continuous training, and it's continuous improvement, mm -hmm. and I think that's very important. Training is not just a one-shot thing. Mm -hmm. and it has to be backed up, and it has to be supported by management, and uh, supervisors mm -hmm. as well. It's something that's rep repetitive. Okay. Can you mm -hmm. tell us um, basically what are the basic telephone techniques that every telemarketer should have? Okay, what I feel is important is first mm -hmm. of all is, uh, is in, when you call customer service you want to hear a pleasant person. Yeah. You want to know the person's awake mm -hmm. and you want them to have a pleasant polite voice. I think that that's important and that can be learned because we just talk out of default, you know, you have, mm -hmm. you have a voice, most people do. Um, and you don't realize the, the, how you can manipulate it. So having a pleasant voice is, is one of the things I think is very important. As well as um, politeness. And when I say this, you know, like we're talking about telemarketers and customer service agents in their role, being polite is just, it, it's very nice to hear on, on the telephone. Yeah. Uh, someone says, thank you, yes ma'am, this, that, and have a nice day. Mm -hmm. uh, what can I do for you today? Just being polite is, 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 is very important. And it's, these are the small things as usual. And people say, oh, they don't really think people appreciate, but, then, but they really do mm -hmm. in the end. As well as a confident vocabulary that they can yeah. and will help you. Yes. And they're there for you and they're focused on you. You, you, you know, you're, you are important to that person. In, in those 10 minutes or so, or even five minutes on the phone. Mm -hmm. um, so you know someone's going to help you, and through that they can convey that by confident and positive vocabulary. Mm -hmm. And then likewise, um, patience, as in they don't interrupt you, yeah. and you, know, you, let, you, know, you get out your problem, and then they can reflect that back. So having patience. And generally, if you like, people helps. It helps with a customer service agent. You know, it makes the job easier. If you're a bit of a people person, I think it's a bit of a struggle if, if you're not a, a people person. Yeah. So I think that's for the agent themselves, if they, they like to help people in general. What you were saying about pleasant voice, mm -hmm. you mean the way it sounds, does that come under voice management? Yes. How does that work? Yes, it is. Um, people don't realize how they can manipulate their voice. How do you manipulate Most people, like for example, singing is the best example. Uh -huh. um, most of us don't get voice lessons. I've never had voice lessons. Mm. Um, I always wanted to. <laughs> but, um, so how I teach that is I get people to sing. In, in class and really? just do voice exercises, you know, uh -huh. just just like the scale. Ah, we have all these different ranges, and we just talk and pick up, pick up the phone and use it subconsciously. Mm -hmm. When we, we don't realize that we're talking like this, and oh, we, they don't realize whether they're mumbling or yeah. they're not opening their mouth. Mm -hmm. And you know, you say, you know, "Good morning," you know, "This is Valerie from Knowledge Point. How may I help you?" Mm -hmm. You know, just uh, the different ranges of your voice that you can use. It's really conveyed over the telephone. You can convey sadness and enthusiasm, and of course, anger is easy to oh, convey. Yeah. You don't need training for that. Yeah, you don't need any training for that. That's natural. But people d don't realize, and sometimes you can have a bit of fun as well, because mm -hmm. it is—it's much better. Like I said, 
if you're a people person and you like people, I'm one of these people who like to like my job. Because mm -hmm. then it's not a job, it's a career, and you, you enjoy it because you spend a significant amount of your life working. Yeah. So why not enjoy it and have fun? Mm -hmm. Are there any myths about um, telephone communications that we succumb to which we shouldn't? Um, basically, one of them for in the customer service kind of realm is smiling. Sm you know, oh, well, yes, yeah. yeah, smiling is conveyed over the telephone, and um, um, that the people, that, like I said, these little. I go back to things that I've repeated about being polite and telling people, well, you, even if you said it 30 times, have a nice day, have a nice day. And mm -hmm. you mean you're just going to do this routine? People do appreciate it. I appreciate when people say that. Is there anything else I can do for you? Mm -hmm. There's little things that are politeness. Smiling is conveyed over the telephone. Mm -hmm. uh, the gesturing, like the salespeople who use their gestures to make a point. This is the best product that you can get for your money. You know, and you, you're using these gestures, and it just while you're on the phone. Yeah, it influences. Uh, it, it just it impresses the 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 point mm -hmm. onto the onto the customer. Oh yeah, it's it con it's conveyed through your voice when you mm. physically also. It's reinforced, I should say. It's reinforced. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a being from America and then the people in sales, they usually wear headsets mm -hmm. and they do this to keep their arms free okay. um, and they, they do gesture and, and they're trained for this, like I said, and, mm -hmm. and, and that does come across. You can pick up the phone and use it subconsciously mm -hmm. all the time. Um, people don't realize, it's, you have to be a bit animated, yeah. you know, you, if you, I'll talk with my, you know, friends or family, naturally how, um, just like you and I are, but if I'm on the phone, I'll be a bit more animated and open my mouth more, mm -hmm. because you're over talk, speaking over an imperfect medium of communication. Yeah. So like you don't you know you don't know uh, you know if there's static on that person's line or they have a problem with their volume or your volume. Mm -hmm. So just be a bit more animated. Be a, you know I tell people you know choose an actor, and, mm -hmm. you know, and then they tell you Julia Roberts or Tom Cruise or this. And I say, well, be that actor for today. Mm -hmm. I try to get them you know to be. A bit silly, but then it just reinforces all the points that we go over in the course. Okay. I've read a few things about um, soft customer service skills, mm. which covers things like NLP. How does mirroring your customer speech patterns okay. get Actually, them to you? Or? Okay. NLP is... Neuro-linguistic. Oh, right, right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Having a, someone of a finance background taking non-performing loans, <laughs> like NLP. Yeah. Oh, okay, um, that the NLP um, is um, basically how people communicate. Um, mm. It's it's kinesthetic programming. It's basically it's basically a memory muscle memory, but it's. Um, like we don't forget, no matter how many times we get into a car, like mm. I haven't driven a car in about six months, but I still get in, I know what to do. Okay. And it feels natural. Um, people, um, how can I explain this? Uh, basically that's feeling. So that's mm -hmm. like their personal, um, preferred personal communication styles. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is one of them, kinesthetic and um, visual, and then, uh, what's it, uh, I can't remember, I can't remember, it's kinesthetic, visual, and, um, there's it, that next one, it's, uh, <laughs> I can't remember this off the top of my head, but I teach this, visual, kinesthetic, feel, see. See and oh, hearing. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Okay. okay. So these are all. It's all their, their personal communi personal preferred personal communication mm -hmm. um, channels, mm -hmm. where like say, oh, I see what you mean, or you know, I can see the writing on the wall, or um, if people say, you know, um, that sounds, you know, that sounds fair to me, mm -hmm. or this sounds like something I don't want to, you know, be involved in. Or feeling, you know, this is a, you know, I don't feel you're listening to me. Mm -hmm. or I don't feel you understand my situation. Okay. These are just mirroring. We go over these in, in, in class. And um, it's very easy to do, but it's, it's very easy to miss if you're not trained for it. Because they're just these, these words you listen to. And then you just yeah. use them in your reply back to them. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it doesn't mean like if the guy is talking really fast, you kind of match up with him. Yeah, that's that. That's the other part of it. That's, that's with awesome. pacing and that and rage. Okay. Is that if if someone is you know if you have a slow talker mm. and you say you know, hello, I'm calling to you know tell you about my account. This <laughs> you say okay, okay, fine. What's your account number? What's your and, you, okay. and you're at a very high you know pace. Yeah. You're not really matching mm -hmm. the, the customer, yeah. and they're gonna feel that you're you're actually talking over their above their head and like you know you're. Mm, it's kind of a bit insulting to mm -hmm. someone like that. They think you're, well, who's this person? Mm -hmm. So you try to get get down to their their level. And if you're, if it's a fast talker, then you try to match them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you talk too slow, then they feel like, well, who is this person that's okay. on the phone? Yeah. You're not gonna be able to help me. Get me someone that can help me. Give me your manager. Mm -hmm. So it is all about using their, um, trying to match their preferred channels of communication, as well as things like the pacing. Mm -hmm. So if you talk too fast, nothing's going to get in. Mm -hmm. I tell my students, pretend there's someone laying on this side with a funnel sticking out of their ear. Mm -hmm. They have a really wide funnel, say it's a stockbroker <laughs> in the middle of the trading, you know, trading day. They can talk like, you know, 210 words a minute. Mm -hmm. And you can match that because all the information will go in. But if you're talking to a furniture dealer in Malacca, on a, you know, it's going to be much slower. So that funnel is going to be you know, more narrow. Mm -hmm. So if you talk too fast, a lot of that is going to just, you know, fall out and they're not going to understand what you're saying. Okay. What about spin doctoring? How does that work over the phone? Spin doctoring? I don't know what spin doctoring is. Um, turning something that may not be so positive into something that's incredibly positive. Okay. Like twisting it. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily lying, but kind of, um, what do you call it? Twisting um, it. I couldn't comment in a sales kind of capacity, but if you're talking about an angry customer mm. or something, um, basically you just should um, be quiet and listen mm -hmm. um, for for a bit. Because, um, like I say, when we get to our complaining caller, that's not necessarily an angry caller. Mm -hmm. Be patient and listen. If it does turn into an angry caller, you have to just you know apologize, give your verbal cues, oral affirmations, and just um, let the person talk and. Make sure you're taking notes as that you're active listening, yeah. Yeah. and um, then when the person's done or starts repeating themselves, you know you can um, excuse yourself. You know, pardon me, ma'am, and that sends them from a you know ascending mode to a receiving mode, and they're ready to listen to you. Mm -hmm. And um, you say, okay, let me see if I have this right, and then you go, uh, and then you re re reflect and repeat what yeah. the what your understanding is of the facts, because you're only, you're only jotting down the facts. Not the emotions, not the circle, nothing. Mm -hmm. So you're just kind of reading in between all of that. Mm -hmm. So sp spinning that around, hopefully, by showing them that you know you're being quiet, you're patient, you're respectful, because um, this is an urgent call, right? Mm -hmm. We say mm -hmm. it's an urgent call when it's someone who's angry, mm -hmm. and um, you know, reflecting back all the information, mm -hmm. and hopefully that is um, that will be enough to turn it around. Mm -hmm. And what I mentioned just now about soft customer service skills, mm -hmm. um, how do you define soft customer service as opposed to just customer service? Um, soft customer service, I would believe that would, would probably be in the realm of all your, your soft skills, your communicating and your active listening and your voice, things that complement, mm -hmm. you know, what you have to get for your customer service, your behaviors your attitude, mm -hmm. um, you know, your f philosophy should be your own philosophy, or you adopt your, you must adopt your company's philosophy mm -hmm. if you want to have like, a positive relationship. And, and companies want employees that believe in their philosophy and follow that to be successful. Yeah. Okay. So I would that would that would be you know just your ideas and attitudes and um, like I said your how you speak. Um, Things of that sort. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what are your thoughts on scripts? Do you think they should be given or not? Well, um, a full script is is not good because people go through uh, integrated voice responses and they go through the the computers and they want to know when they when they reach a, a real person, a real live person. Yeah. So if, if you have a script and you're talking to someone, you're going to sound you're like you're reading and you're like you're a computer. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's been a big complaint in the past. Too dependent on the script. Yeah, being too dependent. But a script, if it's in bulleted form or um, you know a flow chart, I even like mind mapping. Mm -hmm. um, that's good because it keeps you focused, mm -hmm. keeps you directed. 
to your objective and mm -hmm. it allows you not to forget things you know important points or little bits of bits and bobs of information mm -hmm. so uh, scripts aren't good for say um, word for word but if it's more in a, if, if it's in a chart form I think it can be beneficial okay. I mean when I make a phone call I always write down bullets of what mm -hmm. I'm gonna say so I don't forget anything because mm -hmm. in a conversation yeah, you go on and you just, on. You go on tangents, <laughs> it just happens. Okay. Like, talking over the phone is very challenging as opposed to face-to-face -face communication. Mm -hmm. How do you um, determine what your customers' needs are? Are there any techniques or phrases that you, you know you need to say in order to get them to answer? Basically, um, when they call you, they're calling you not to say, hey, you're doing a great job. Yeah, they're calling you for a, <laughs> they're calling you for a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a complaint or they have a uh, issue or a problem that they need solved. So you have to listen. Mm -hmm. You have to actively listen to what the customer is saying. Mm -hmm. If they're a bit vague and they don't know the problem, which yeah. happens in com in computers mm -hmm. and things, uh, you just have to take them and you know, guide them. Oh, is this happening? Is that happening? If they're indecisive, they're not sure. Basically, you have to listen, and then you have to, uh, if when you want to elaborate, you have to ask open-ended questions. Who, what, where, mm -hmm. why, how. Mm -hmm. And then when you think you have all the information you need and you want to confirm to make sure you understand, you ask your closed-ended questions, mm -hmm. which is yes or no or, or whatever answer. It's usually one more answer. Basically, it's listening. Listen to your customer. Yeah. It's important. And you mentioned active listening. How is active listening different from... Listening. Well, it's, it's, it's like listening and hearing. Hearing, um, if you're, um, uh, other than if you're uh, physically handicapped, we all hear by default. Yeah. Okay, we have two ears, and you hear. You can't help that. Um, but listening is where it's an intellectual and emotional um, mm -hmm. activity, where you are listening for. If it's in person, you listen for your their body. Look at their body language. Mm -hmm. Uh, over the phone, you're listening for um, their emotional state. You know, you know. Take if they're angry or sad or sarcasm. Yeah. You're you, so you're listening through that. You're listening for things that maybe they can't say or mm -hmm. or directly, um, mm -hmm. but maybe they're hinting at. Mm -hmm. So it's more of um, you know, hearing. You can you can just um, be li be listening and not take anything in. You know, you ever just look at someone and you just, they're talking and, and you just realize, wait a minute, what did they say? Yep. <laughs> Where was I for that, that minute? You know, you're thinking about, oh, you're washing or you're shopping or, you know, did, did you turn, you know, the light off at home or something? Mm -hmm. But this is really focusing. Mm -hmm. And that's why it would help, you know, when you, you know, you jot notes and, yeah. and even letting a customer know, okay, if they're talking too fast, oh, I'm just taking notes as, you know, we go along here to make sure I have a complete understanding of your situation, mm -hmm. you know, do you mind slowing down or something. Mm -hmm. So that's more of act active listening. You're focusing, you're giving oral cues, verbal affirmations. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. What do you think are the most common ways that, you know, call center agents or receptionists and whatever, they... Um, what are the most common mistakes that they make or things they take for granted? Uh, let's see. One thing is they don't let people finish. They interrupt people. They okay. don't let them finish their thoughts. Mm -hmm. They form answers uh, in their head because maybe they've heard the same common complaint time and time again. Mm -hmm. And then they cut off the person. Mm -hmm. And it's a bit irritating yeah. whether it's, it is the same question, but then it couldn't be. Mm -hmm. you know, there's lots of instances um, or when I was in when I was in university and one professor was notorious for cutting off a student and because mm -hmm. she thought she knew the question but only 50% of the time she was right and, I, and I've had it done to me and I'd look at a classmate and say it's not what I wanted okay. to ask mm -hmm. so that's to be patient and you know I've heard it they have to realize that this is a new person you know it's a generic problem but each caller is individual so it's happening yeah. to them mm -hmm. so let people talk and like I said, if they start repeating themselves, then you interject with, oh, excuse me, you know, mm -hmm. Mr. Singh, uh, let me just make sure I, have, I under, have understand this correctly. Yeah. So... Would that be the same as the eighth question which I've listed here, like sabotaging your sales over the phone? Um, usually with sales over the telephone, people aren't able to handle for, for sabotaging themselves. Is they're not 
well prepared, mm -hmm. like they say. You, you have your script, but like I said, I just like your bullet points or your mind mapping um, type of uh, diagram. Because they're not prepared for objections. Yeah. And it's usually the rule of thumb is you read all of your objections or your frequently asked questions and you have like a minimum of like five answers, four or five answers for each one. Mm -hmm. And so their inability to, to be able to, because you know, if I have an objection and I hear like three kind of answers, like, you know, that says, yes, my objection is valid, you always agree with the person because it is valid, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's price or, or just, uh, you know, some feature or something, it's this, that's very valid. But mm -hmm. We have this, this, and this, you know, to offset that. So you need to, to, off, to offset them. Also, pushing too hard and too fast. Yeah. I mean, too aggressive. Yeah, they're too aggressive over the telephone. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they should try not to. Ha, ha, typically, they say try not to do a sale in the first um, call. Mm -hmm. Maybe the second call. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then they focus on, for sales, they focus on the features instead of the benefits. Mm hmm. Okay, so, you know, if you're on a telephone and say, um, you know, you have a speed dial feature, yeah, well, that's great, but how can that benefit me? Why do I want to pay more for your service? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, what's the benefit of yeah. the features? Yeah. Features are there, but benefits are very, very important. That's where you make your sale. Mm -hmm. So that's how I think that um, agents have to be very, very prepared. Is it one of their biggest mistakes? Not just not being trained on telephone skills. Skills are one thing, mm. but not being trained on their products and services themselves. Yes. Yeah. That not knowing them thoroughly enough to talk mm -hmm. about them confidently mm -hmm. and um, as an expert. Mm -hmm. Yes. And actually, I mean, a lot of um, uh, customers will say, well, what about this company? And I'll name a competitor of yours. Well, you know, your competitor mm -hmm. product does this and this, and it's, you know, $100 cheaper than yours. Yeah. Yeah. And people are like, ah, uh, they're a bit stuck. So you need to understand a bit of your competitors. Of course, not in, in detail, depending mm -hmm. on, you know, mm -hmm. the level of sales that you're doing. Okay. Uh, it's very, very high level of sales. Yeah. Um, we're talking millions of dollars, uh, hundreds of thousands. Then you need to understand your competitors intimately. Yeah. Otherwise, um, you, you know, for you know, say low end, low end sales, you just need to say, oh yeah, they do have these features, but you know, we have mm -hmm. the same for this, but you know, we, we have a, a better feature. Yeah. So you need to understand that. Would you say that the biggest way of sabotaging your own company, your own company's image, is by putting an untrained, inexperienced agent over the phone? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Abs absolutely. Because not only is this person. Um, you know, representing themselves, but it's your corporate image. Why would mm -hmm. you want someone who has no training, who doesn't know how to talk or speak or handle themselves, yeah. or react to a customer, or mm -hmm. to control their emotions, or have patience? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're just um, that for branding purposes of, of your firm. It's it's doesn't make any sense to put someone on the phone who doesn't know how to handle and conduct themselves in a professional manner. Mm -hmm. Okay. Apart from Citibank, you mentioned Citibank. Are there any, you know, another one or two companies that you think are a very, very good example of professional? Um, they have good telephonists, they have good receptionists, good service. Actually, uh, actually, a good example I will say was Star Alliance in Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, they were very good. That's for the the, the airline. Um, I wanted to redeem a ticket, get a free ticket because I had mm -hmm. so many miles. They're very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they were very good. Okay. Mm. All right. Final question. Um, dealing in customer service is important for you to maintain a cheerful outlook and smile all the time. What keeps you smiling when you don't feel like it? Um, being a bit silly, you mm. know, between calls. Yeah. Uh, you know, they always say you know to keep a mirror. You know, but oh. about that size, one that can, not a small one, one that you can have and, and you can see yourself fully. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, different mental exercises. Mm -hmm. um, if I want to get some aggression out, um, you know, I could. If I'm dealing with a, a difficult customer, and if, you know, you could you draw them. <laughs> you know, make this angry face, and then you take it afterwards. And you're smiling over the phone because you. Know, you know, well, you know, then you know, you just kind of make a silly face, or you know, I, I also do this this thing where it's um, uh, a mental exercise, mm -hmm. where you know, you have three things on your side. Um, I can think any thought I want. I can think any thought I want about myself. This person cannot um, upset me or have affected me. And then I write 
three statements. We do that in our class. So the first statement may be, you know, this person's loony. This person is, you know, you know, uh, something. You know, this is a kooky, crazy person. Uh -huh. Next thing I know, I'm professional. You know, I'm not, you know, I know I'm an prof intelligent, professional person. Mm. And the third one maybe, you know, uh, as soon as I get off this phone, I'll never have to talk to this person for the rest <laughs> of my life. So uh, these, these mental exercises mm. you can do, and like, see, drawing pictures and then throwing them out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, now I know why you just do all that on the phone with them. Just <laughs> 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 you on paper. Yeah, if but you're it would be nice to you over the phone. Yeah, because you do have to get it out because you try not to take it home because in, in, in sales is a very, very tough job as well as customer service. It's easy yeah. to keep it inside. People abuse you. You hear terrible stories. I mean, the call centers I train at would mm. say people have, you know, cry, the women cry, and, uh, things like that. People can be very, very abusive, very, abusive, very mean, mm -hmm. non caring. It's mm. coming to you with a problem and they want you to solve anything. Yeah. Everything and anything. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, sometimes when people call call centers, they are um, it's unrealistic expectations sometimes because they are dealing with another person. Mm -hmm. they think you're so fast. they forget that, yeah. yeah. But actually, really breathing a lot, you know, like t I say, they say five, I say ten, super deep breaths, mm -hmm. gets all that stale air out of your lungs, and you just you just bring it out. Um, really gives you a bit of a rush. Mm -hmm. I mean, it takes a few minutes to do it, but it's very true. Yeah. You know, just laughing with a coworker, or just you know, going outside and oh, just doing something. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank Do you that. very much, Miss Lynn. You're welcome. Had a very good time with you. Thank you.